Good morning, and who is excited to be at church on Daylight Saving Time Sunday? You made it, <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad that you did. Uh, there are so many that are uh, down with uh, the flu, that are down with different illnesses. We want to remember praying for them, so I'm so glad to have such a great uh, crowd show up. Glad you're smiling faces here. Uh, the ushers are passing out the attendance sheets now, if you'll help us out and just let us know you're here. That helps us keep track of, of if anybody is out. We always like to try to check up on them and follow up with them. And so we appreciate your uh, willingness to participate in that and, and take part in it. We've been talking about... Uh, the, uh, the title of this series we've been doing is All That Matters, because there are some things that are just more important than others in this life, amen? There are some things that really uh, make a difference in eternity, and, and those are the things that we're focusing on, and, and we looked last week about how uh, even though uh, God has blessed us with much, we need to understand uh, what it's for, why, why God has blessed us with much, and what the more is for, it's so we can be a blessing to other people. As we get ready to uh, go to the, the Word today, I was thinking about things that really do matter, and with it being uh, the Sunday where we lose an hour of sleep, um, how many of y'all would agree with me that sleep matters? <laughs> It never seemed to get enough of it. Do you remember when you were little? Uh, did anybody used to hate taking naps? What was wrong with us? Naps are, naps are of God. Amen. <laughs> and uh, it seems like the, the more days that I get behind me, uh, the, the more tired sometimes I am throughout the day. And I don't know if y'all were like this when you had children, if, if your family was this way. But without fail, y'all, if I have a day where I have to get up early, my kids sleep in and don't want to get out of bed. I don't know why this is. And then if there's a day that I don't have to be up early, it doesn't happen often, but on those precious days where I know I could sleep a little bit longer, they are up the moment the first drop of sunlight comes through their window. Can anybody testify to your kids being the same way? I don't know why this is. And, and I'll tell you why that's important. Sleep is important. But just to make a bit of a spiritual point, when we lose things that are important, when we lose focus on those things spiritually that are important, it puts us in a bad spot. Y'all, when I lose sleep, I'm not the same smiling, wonderful person you see before you. And the other day, don't judge me too harshly on this. I'm just being uh, honest with you. The other day, I had a, a, a morning where I had to be up very, very early. I had to travel for uh, prison training uh, and, and go, go out of town. And so I was up very early. And I walked through the house, and, and all the kids were asleep. And I don't know why I did this. I was just exhausted. It had been a, a long day the day before. And I was exhausted. And I walked through the house, and everyone was sleeping soundly. And I looked at them, and I just thought, I don't know how they've done it, but they're all conspiring against me. You know, just in that moment of frustration and weakness, I was like, they can sense. Like, they know I'm awake, so they're all just out like logs. I even looked at my wife and thought, maybe she's in on this. Because she was sleeping soundly. You know, you don't even think rational when you're losing, <laughs> losing sleep. I even looked at the baby and thought, I don't know how. He can tell. But Benjamin's the worst, our 10-month-old. He knows when, when to wake me up and, and when I would normally get to sleep. It's, it's so funny. I begin to think those ways. When we lose those things that are important to us spiritually, it, it can cause us frustrations. It can cause us exhaustion. God says there are things in his word very clearly that matter, that make a difference. Those are what we want to focus on more than anything else. If you find yourself really exhausted by life, uh, just worn out by others, maybe easily irritated, easily frustrated. Maybe you need this message today. Maybe you're like me, and we need to focus again on what really matters. Put things into perspective. Would you pray that way with me as we go to the Word of God together? Heavenly Father, I thank you that we've sensed your presence, God, and when we're gathered in your name, you're here. And that should matter to us most of all, that we bring honor to you, because you've given everything for us. So God, today I lay this time at your feet. Holy Spirit, I, I just pray you have your will and your way in this place. Let your word go forth as you desire it. In the name of Jesus, and all in agreement said, amen. amen. So if you're following along in your notes, I'm going to go kind of quickly through some of this uh, because I, I want to make sure and leave time for prayer today. And, and I'm going to tell you all this from the get-go. 
uh, not for anything that I'm speaking on today, but uh, I, I come before you with a bit of a heavy heart. Um, I'm a little bit distracted in my mind and in, and in my, my soul, I guess you would say, uh, because someone very dear to me, very dear to our church is going through a very difficult struggle. And, and I asked, and, and he does not mind me sharing with you today, uh, one of our church elders actually serves a role, one of our ministry elders, just like uh, Aaron, who uh, filled in for Pastor Mark today, uh, uh, Jimmy Garcia. Uh, y'all all know Jimmy and Maria? Uh, precious, precious people. Uh, Jimmy got some devastating news from the doctor this week, was going on a completely unrelated note and mentioned some symptoms he was having and apparently medications that he's been taking for years. You know, sometimes they can counteract one another. Uh, Y'all, I don't don't know how to say this other than just to say it. They're basically eating his insides and they have not given him much time to live. Uh, They've actually called the family in. Y'all, he just went for a regular appointment, was not having any symptoms. Now they've started to flare up. He's starting to see uh, thing, things happen. Uh, y'all, his life matters. We're talking about all that matters. People's souls matter. Their health matters. So before I even say anything, before we even, I even preach a message, would you join me in a prayer of faith to pray for Jimmy, uh, first and foremost? Because again, priorities, when someone's life is on the line, priorities shift. And I just want to ask you if you, if you would to, to pray with me that way. And, and please pray for a miracle. Doctors have basically said they've done all they can do. But how many of you know that's not all God can do? And that is not the point that God's power stops or that his ability ceases. So could we just pray for Jimmy together? Father, in your all-powerful name, I lift up my brother to you. And God, I ask that you would be with him right where he's at. God, as his body is weak, we pray that the body of Christ would be strong on his behalf. God, I've seen you do miraculous things. You even raised the dead. He has been given a report of death. But God, we are not accepting that and we are speaking life over him. God, we're praying that you make a difference, you make an impact in his body right now in the name of Jesus. Your word says when we gather in agreement that that, that you will work according to your will. And I believe it is your will for him to be healed. So I speak health and healing. I prophesied over his body in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, who is more powerful than any medicine, who is is greater than any disease or destructive force that could come up against our body. We claim victory and healing in the name of Jesus. And all in agreement said... Amen and amen. Church, would you give God praise for his ability to heal, for him hearing our prayer? I thank you, God. I rejoice in you, Father. And, and thank you for that. I'm sorry. I just uh, I wanted to get to that first. I didn't even want to wait till the altar call. Because, y'all, what matters is people. What matters are souls. What, what matters is the body of Christ, our family in God. And sometimes we go through the motions of church. We go through the motions. You know, we're going to sing some songs here. Guys talk for a little while and go right back into life. But how many of y'all know life happens and life hurts a lot of times? It's difficult. And if the enemy is able to, he will get us off track. He'll get us uh, focused on the wrong things. And so I believe that God wants us to focus, to just be laser focused on what's most important. Because time is very short. Time is of the essence. Jesus could come back at any moment. Any one of us could step from this life into eternity. We never know when our time is is coming. We could get into our car and have an accident. Our heart could fail. Any number of things. And we want to have courage in God. We want to have boldness in God that that we have got our heart right. That that everything is in order. And that he is priority. And we want to go out declaring that message. See, here's here's the thing. If if you want to follow along. the The first point I want to make to you is that we are to share the gospel of Jesus. Not just us. And what I mean by that, is, I don't say it to sound mean or to sound you know, judgmental. But, but oftentimes we think of church as just being about us. What song are they singing that I like? What, what message is he preaching that is for me? And y'all, if Jesus has already saved your soul, you've got everything you ever need. Amen. And, and the, the gospel, the, the title of today's message is simply that our mission, the mission we're on is the message of Jesus. Everything we do, whether it's praying for people, whether it's ministering to people, whatever we're doing, it's to share Jesus with the world. If all we ever tell people about is Lakeview, Lakeview cannot save anybody. If all you ever do is say, boy, Lakeview's got the greatest pastor this world has ever seen. Amen. 
thank you, three of you. Uh, if, that's, if that's the only thing you ever do is talk about how good the preaching is, how good the singing is, I believe our church is awesome. I'm grateful for you guys. I'm, I'm thankful for the work that God is doing through this body of believers. But y'all, it's not about us. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He is who this world needs. They don't need just another church building. They don't need just another message. The message is the gospel of Jesus. It's not about us anymore. Jesus has already given us all we need. And, and so if you look with me at Acts 10, 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. I first want you to notice even Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit. This has become a taboo subject where people are like, what is the Holy Spirit? Or how does the Holy Spirit affect my life? We've got denominational divides over it. Y'all, if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, we should want the Holy Spirit to be in our life too. Amen? It says that God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all, not just who were sick, it says all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Church, I don't think it takes even a very deep Christian to be able to look at the world around us and see the influence of the power of the devil in this world. You do know the devil is real. Just as much as God is real, the enemy is real. And you'll see it in people's lives who are bound by addiction. They're they're beat down by depression and worry. They're they're in chains. We see relationships being torn apart. Families aren't surviving. Uh, Parents are abandoning children. And children are hating their parents and and not, not wanting to be obedient. You just see our society. You can see the influence. That is not of God. You can see the influence of the enemy. But Jesus Christ himself was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And says he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Jesus has the power to break any chain that anyone is bound by. Jesus has the power to change any situation that you're going through, that anybody's going through. So again, we're not here to promote ourselves. We're not here to promote a denomination or a church. Uh, We're here to promote Jesus Christ. See, the mission is in that message. And the next three things, I just want want you to jot them down quickly, is number one, the mission is not money. We can't just look and say, look at all the stuff we've accumulated, look at all the buildings we've built, look at all the the resources we have and say that we are a success. Sometimes we feel like if we've got a lot of money, we're being blessed by God, and that's not always the case. Now, how many of you would be happy to be blessed by God and have money? Amen. But they don't always go hand in hand. There's different seasons. There's, God knows what we need, and he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. That's what the Bible says. We don't need to get impatient. We don't need to think that God is all of a sudden not in charge because we can't charge anything else on our credit card. Amen. We need to, we need to take stock in where we're at and where God has us because the mission is not money. Also, the mission is not fame. We're not just here to promote how great we are, how spiritual we are, that we're better than the church down the street or we're better than our neighbor who's a sinner. We're out to promote Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what this is all about. The mission is not just getting popular. It's not just people wanting to be like us because we're all so cool and well-dressed and all that stuff. The message is people saying, I want what you got because you've got the real thing. You've got Jesus. You've got God. That's the true mission we're after. And finally, the mission, y'all, this may sound weird, it's not even ministry. Do you know you can do good deeds and still live for the devil? You can can act right. You can act even righteous. The Bible says all our righteousness is like filthy rags before God. Unless you've really got it, unless the Holy Spirit is, is living in you and living through you, unless you're making a difference in this world with your life. What good is is saying, you know, we've built orphanages and hospitals. Those things are good. But if we haven't told somebody about Jesus, if their eternal soul is not changed, you know, you can even heal somebody from from sickness. And unless their, their soul, Jesus gave an example of that when the man was lowered to him from the roof who was paralyzed. When those friends broke the roof apart and they lowered their friend to get to Jesus because the house was so full. The first thing Jesus did was look at him and said, your sins are forgiven. Because that's the most important, amen? The message is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not money, it's not fame, it's not even ministry. We're not here just to promote a ministry or to promote a church. We're promoting Christ above all else. And just like Jesus was empowered, I love Acts 1.8. And again, it's, it's been read a lot, and I hope it never loses its power and intensity to you. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. 
and you will be my witnesses. Jesus is telling this. He says, we will be witnesses for him in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is what he was speaking specifically to his followers before he ascended to heaven. But he said, this is for everybody. He said, this promise is for generations, the, the word of God says. It's for your children and generations, all those far off. As, as far down the line as you can go, this is a promise of power that is given to believers. And it's power given to us to do something. It says, you'll receive it so you will be my witnesses. A witness is somebody that can say, I know that really happened. Because I saw it happen. Think about that for a minute. How are we being witnesses of Jesus with our life in this world? If the mission, if what really matters is the message of Jesus Christ, are we living a life that testifies to him? I've got three questions I I want you to ask yourself about this message that we're trying to deliver. Number one, will anybody hear the message? And this is important because we live in a society right now that wants Christians to be quiet. They they would rather us not make them uncomfortable. They'd rather us not bring up things of God or Jesus. Don't bring up sin. There's a lot of churches that don't preach about sin anymore. Y'all, preaching about sin, we're not hating the sinner. We're not trying to make you just feel bad. We're trying to show you how you can feel good through Jesus. We're trying to show you how you can be free. In Jesus' name. You don't have to be bound up by that mess. And Romans 10, 14 asks a question. It says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And I did a word study of this. I went back to the original language as best I can. And it's very clear. When it says someone preaching to them, it's a word that that maybe we would translate to say every man or every woman. It's not just speaking about a minister or a person with a microphone. It says, how can they hear without someone preaching to them? How many of you know people that would never darken the doorstep of a church building, but Jesus loves them just like he loves us? He wants them to be saved just like He desired for us that he reached out to us. We sang about his love that pursues. It would forsake the 99 to go after the one. And y'all, you are the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. There are people that I will never be able to maybe reach or speak to. They wouldn't even listen to me. Some people hear, oh, you're a pastor. And they shut down because they're like, you've got to talk about it. That's your job. But when they hear it from someone who testifies, of, I don't have any reason to tell you about it other than it's changed me. And God has done this for me. And you tell them what you've been through and what God has brought you through. That's the kind of preaching people need. That speaks more than a thousand sermons. Or or a thousand church services. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony. And your testimony. Will anybody hear the message? When's the last time you actually spoke to somebody? About Jesus. And again, I don't tell you this to make you feel bad. I tell you this to show us we should feel confident, bold in the Holy Spirit to get this message out to everybody. Again, we talk about time as being short. Remember, we're to share the gospel of Jesus, not just us. I don't want us in this room to be the only people that go to heaven. I've got a lot of friends, a lot of family that they are lost. If they died right now, they would go to hell. Can I say that? Hell is a real place. And if they died right now, their sins are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is what it requires. You don't just get to just feel sorry for your sins. You don't just get to know, yeah, I did wrong. You have to put your faith in Jesus. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. You can't water that down. You can't dilute that. You can't put it in a nice little package and say, yeah, you can just come to church and check a box, pray a prayer. No, you've got to give your life to him. And for him, will anybody hear the message it leads me to the second question. Will anybody believe the message? Revelation 12, 11, I just quoted some of this to you. It says, they triumphed over him. Who they're talking about here is the devil, the adversary. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much. Listen to this. As to shrink from death. They were not so concerned with their life. 
that it affected the way they lived for God. People will stop talking about Jesus if they're afraid it makes other people uncomfortable. Yet in the early church, there were men who were willing to die, men and women that were willing to go to death, death's doorstep just to tell other people about Jesus. They were martyred. They, they died horrific deaths. How many of us, though, we struggle to even go to our workplace, maybe even to our loved ones, maybe even to people that we feel it in our hearts, but we, we really love our lives. We love our reputation. We don't want to be thought of as weird We don't want to make it uncomfortable. That's loving our lives to where we shrink from death. We don't don't want that perception of us to die. We don't want that comfort level we're in. And I tell you this, God spoke this to my heart this morning. And I'm going to be real with you. It was no fun getting out of bed when it was still dark at 7 a.m. I was like, the sky is broken. (laughs) I don't understand. And, and, and I, I didn't like that. And, and I was like, man, it's probably going to be a struggle for some people to make it uh, to church today. But y'all, forget making it to church. We want to make it to heaven. Amen. And I realized that the enemy doesn't always just have to make us feel defeated. He doesn't always have to make us feel sick. He just has to make us feel comfortable doing things that we shouldn't do. And th- th- this scripture here is such an example of It's a warning to not love your life so much that you waste it. Philippians 1.21 kind of expounds on that thought where the Apostle Paul writes, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And y'all, just pardon me for a moment while I testify about how good God is. Because no matter what happens to us physically, No matter what happens to us in this earth, no matter if you steal all my money, you burn my house down, you take my cars and the payment attached to them, hallelujah. No matter anything that I would lose in this world, I am promised of some incredible things in eternity. I am promised that I go to a place where there will be no more sickness, there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, that God will wipe away every tear. We will never have to lose a loved one ever again. Never can the ravages of cancer or disease harm our body. No more will people fight, there will be no more strife, no more guilt, no more sorrow. All that stuff is gone. We get to walk around in eternity. We get to see God face to face. All the questions we've ever had will be answered. All the worries we've ever had will be washed away. Everything will be provided forever and ever. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to fight for it. We just get it. Amen. Somebody should give God praise for that. So look, look, look. To live, to live. Live for Jesus. Because man, if you die, you get everything. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. Praise God. So whatever the enemy tries to do, my goodness, devil, if you do kill me, then I get an early retirement. Come on, somebody. And it's going to be an awesome retirement party. So I speak that to you. I don't just say that as some cliche. I say it to you. Live for Jesus. Live as Christ. And be willing to give your life for this message. Some of you have loved ones, like like we talked about, that are unsaved. Do whatever it takes. Persuade them. Live a life. I mean, go, go to whatever extreme. Let, let, let God lead you in that way. Galatians 2.20 goes on to say this. For I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Does anybody believe that truth? Jesus lives in you. If you've given your life to him, you have been crucified with Christ. You no longer live. He lives in you. The life I live is in the body, and I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Think of, think of all the powerful truths found just in this passage of Scripture. I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. That sounds like a negative, but y'all, how many of you know your faults? How many of you know your weaknesses that the enemy can exploit? Your quick temper. Your, your, your uh, worries and the things that can cause you to stress and lose sleep and, and, and to fear. What if we really understood the power of this, that Jesus lives in us and through us? The next time the enemy shows up at the door, he's not finding us at the door. The Bible says he should find the strong man of the house, 
Jesus Christ. You are the sons and daughters of the Most High. When the enemy confronts you, he's confronting all the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Because that's what the Bible says. And it says, when this life we live, we live it by faith in Jesus who gave himself for us. It was so important to God that he died for us to have this authority. He died for us to have this assurance. And so people are looking at us and saying, does anybody in church actually believe what they preach? Does anybody actually live? Live this stuff they talk about. That's what I say. Will anybody believe the message? And it starts with us. Do we truly believe that? The next time fear shows up, it's not just facing you. It's facing the son of God, the daughter of God that you are. It's facing Jesus who resides in you. Understand, that's how this works. That's how scripture. I can show you a hundred scriptures that say the same thing. And if we really believe that, we can start getting victory over things that used to pull us down. Because here's the thing. The enemy wants to stop us. When you've given your life to God, he wants to stop you. Even if he can't stop you from going to heaven, he doesn't want you to reach anybody else. He wants it to end the cycle to stop there. And you will see, I have seen so many grandparents who love the Lord, but their children, their grandchildren are away from God. It breaks my heart. I know my grandmother, she, she attended Lakeview uh, for years. She was even a member of the Cash Street Church of God many years ago. And y'all, a lot of us, I, can I tell y'all, I believe I'm here in large part due to the prayers of my little grandma that would sit right over there in that pew and would pray for us for way, way down the line. She, she stood in the gap for us. Can I tell you, it is okay. It is not only okay, it is necessary to pray for your family, to want them to want to follow Jesus. But here, here, here's the, the, the key. The final question I have for you today is, will anybody follow the message? Because you understand, we cannot force people to love Jesus. Don't you wish you could? You know, people hear us talking about God, and they, they think we're being judgmental, or we're being super spiritual. And, and it's not that, it's just that we want them to know what we know, how good he is. How life-changing, eternity-changing Jesus is. But will anybody follow the message? God laid this scripture on my heart to share with you just in closing today. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And that, that's a heavy term, an ambassador. They represent, they're a representative of their country that they come from. They're in a foreign land, but they are the authority for their country in that land. It says we are his ambassadors, and look at the next part, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Y'all, I'm so thankful that God loves me and loves you, but there's a whole lot of people out there that are broken, their life is in shambles, their eternity is headed the wrong direction. That God also loves and we should love. I know they don't seem lovable right now, but how many of us were in that same state? We don't need to forget about where we were or else we'll forget about those that are still there. We want them to follow us as we follow Jesus. We, we, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We are led by Jesus Christ, but we want to make sure we're leading others down that path to where they become part of the body of Christ. I, I think it's so... Uh, fitting. Uh, it's funny how God works things out. Some of my dear friends, y'all know them, they're part of our church family, but they had to move for, for work. So glad to have Mike and Stacy Long here today, y'all. You're a blessing. And they've got a little miracle. As, as today, as I was praying for Jimmy, as he was told about death, how encouraging is it to see a miracle of life? When they thought they couldn't have kids, she's got one growing inside of her right now, a little baby boy. I got to see the sonogram. God help him, he looks just like his daddy. But he's going to be all right. <laughs> Fair enough. But what a reminder of the miracle power of God. That even when we face death, we know that there, with God there's always a hope for life. There's always a hope for these things. We are ambassadors for Jesus. We're to bring that kind of message to people. They live in a dying world, but we've got good news for them. The gospel means good news. We get to tell them, this ain't all there is. It doesn't end when you close your eyes that final time, you breathe your last breath. This is not all that there is to it. There's a hope in Jesus Christ. And I know there's some things that are out of our control 
that can affect this. But we need to take very uh, seriously our responsibility as ambassadors for Jesus. And there are things that I believe that you can't always control, and there's, there's things that you can. And, and I, I want to share two, two of them with you. Number one, our feelings are not always under our control. You know, sometimes you just, something just hits you just right. And y'all, again, we have Christ in us, but we, we still are fighting the battle between the flesh and the spirit, the Bible calls it. It's a war, it says. And the flesh will try to rear its ugly head. The Bible says you've got to crucify the flesh daily. It tries to come back. It doesn't just go away. You've got to deal with it time and time again. Now, you'll get better. You'll get stronger at dealing with it if you'll do it consistently. But understand, while your feelings are not always under control, you're not always going to feel like doing the right thing. You're not always going to feel like responding to somebody in love who has treated you poorly. You're not always going to feel like being like Jesus. You may not even feel when you pray for somebody like it's going to be answered. You may not even know. You, that's when faith kicks in. You don't feel it. You just trust it. You say, I, I, you know, I don't, I'm not feeling goosebumps. I'm not feeling lightning bolts. But I know what God's word says. And when you have that kind of determination, that's, that's real faith. Faith is not about your feelings. In fact, it says that we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is the evidence of things not yet seen. The substance of things hoped for. So you're hoping it happens. You don't even know how it's going to happen, but you know all things with God are possible. So you can't control your feelings, but can I tell you what is under control? Our behavior is always under our control. Somebody can make you feel frustrated. They can make you feel upset, angry. They can make you feel sad, filled with despair. Those feelings may well up in you. But don't use that as an excuse to act in a way that would not glorify Jesus. You are his ambassador, remember. And we are making God's appeal to this world. It says he's making his appeal through us. That's a big deal. The Bible says no one comes to the Father except the Spirit draws them. We are to have the Holy Spirit living in us and speaking through us to other people. And so your behavior is under control. Your feelings may not be. You may not feel like it, but you can act like it. And I want you to remember that truth because that's when victory comes in. Can I tell you this? Jesus did not feel like going to the cross. He prayed so fervently. He prayed so uh, deeply that God would choose another path, that there was some other option that he began to sweat drops of blood. But he did it anyway because it was the right thing to do. You may have to bite your tongue till it about cuts in half to not say what you really want to say and what somebody might even deserve in that moment to hear. But if they hear you, cuss them out, dress them down, belittle them, they may never hear the gospel when you try to bring that up to them. You've got to be careful because you're an ambassador for Jesus. Your feelings may not be under your control, but your behavior is. And when you get that, when you understand this key point, the mission is the message. Don't let anything compromise the message. Your behavior is what can comp. You know what? People can't always tell how you're feeling, but they can always tell how you're acting. People don't always know what you're going through. Isn't it a difficult thing? Like this morning, I'm not kidding. I've I've been uh, been very heavy hearted for my friend. I love Jimmy, y'all, and I'm standing on faith that, that he's this is not his time. He's going to be healed. But I'd be lying to you if I said it. Even Jesus, when he was confronted with, with the death of Lazarus, his dear friend, it says in Scripture, the shortest verse, it says Jesus wept. Even Jesus had feelings. He felt everything just like we did. We have. That's what the Bible says. But he controlled his behavior. He stayed an example of us for us to follow for others. I want to ask you, to, if you're able to stand with me, please, if someone would come to the music, and as we prepare to pray this morning, I just want to leave that last point up for you to look at. The mission for us as followers of Jesus is the message of Jesus. Let nothing compromise the message. Don't let your feelings, definitely don't let your actions compromise the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. There are people here under the sound of my voice 
that, and, and I don't know, I'm, I'm not you know, all-knowing, but God is, and he knew you were going to be here. And so he gave me these words to speak, and I want you to hear them. There are people here that the life you live, you know it's not one that fully glorifies God. I'm not saying that to be judgmental. I'm just saying what God told me. And y'all, I've been there, and I, and I fought that battle. We have to be reminded every day we are ambassadors for Christ. The mission is the message. And so don't let your testimony, it says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony. Don't let your testimony be compromised by your actions. You may not, not always feel like living for God. I get it. You may not always feel like praying. I understand. But we need to do it anyway. It's the right thing to do. You may not always feel like having faith. But if you won't let go of faith, you are holding on to the promises of God. And God always keeps his promises. I want to ask you if you would to bow your heads and bow your hearts. And if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, I just want you to examine your own heart. Again, remember what we read in Scripture. Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your reputation. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. What matters is the truth. What matters is eternity. And if you're standing in here today and you say, I am not living a life that glorifies God. Maybe you love the Lord. You, you want to do, do right, but you, you're not making those decisions. It's one thing to say you love Jesus. It's another thing to live it out. And, and right now you're being convicted of things. Conviction's not bad. It's not condemnation. It's not designed to bring you down. It's designed to lift you up. But there are things in your heart, in your mind, conversations you've had, choices you've made, uh, things you've done, maybe even yesterday, maybe five minutes ago, that you need to get under the blood of Jesus and that you want to change about your life. If that's you, you say, I want a, a, a complete, a fresh start. I, I want to make sure when people see my life, they don't see these distractions of, of my faults, that they see Christ in me. If that's you, you, would you raise your hand just right where you're at? Lots of us. Yeah, thank you for your honesty. God bless you. You can put your hands down. I want to pray for you first. And I want to pray for you right now. But I'm not dismissing after this prayer, so hang with me. Would you join your hearts and let's pray for God just to break us free, give us freedom from those things that would ever compromise his message. God, in your name I pray right now that any addiction that people walked in here with, whether it's physical, emotional, sexual, whatever, whatever thing that has bound them, God. If it's fear, if it's doubt, if, it, if it's stress, those things that have caused them to act in a way that doesn't glorify you, that doesn't show that they trust you. We pray for freedom from that, th all those things right now in the name of Jesus. It says you came to set the captives free and any who are in Christ are free indeed. So, Lord, I speak that over their hearts. I speak that they would not feel like they've got to go back to that old way, that they have to go back to that old sin or that old habit, whatever it might be. You are more important. Your message matters most. So we speak against anything that would compromise that message in the name of Jesus. And those that would receive that said, amen and amen. Would you give him praise for those that I believe have been set free right now? Believe it by faith. Again, you don't have to feel it. You just got to act it out. You got to live it. Now, I want to pray especially for this next, next group of people. Because I think there's a lot of us in here. You're trying. I'm right there with you. You're trying, but man, it's not always easy. And when I say don't let anything compromise the message, yes, that's internal. But there can be external circumstances that, that bring unnecessary stresses, unnecessary pain, unnecessary hardships. And can I tell you, those are not of God. And you don't have to bear those burdens. There are certain things we have to bear. We don't have to put up with the, the junk that the enemy throws at us. Some of you have been attacked in this place. In your emotions, in your finances, in your relationships, in your families, you have been under attack. And you know the difference. Sometimes there's stuff we do to ourselves, but other times there just is an enemy that hates us, hates what we're doing, and he wants to compromise the message. He wants us to be so distracted fighting all these little battles that we can't focus on the war that we're in. We can't focus on what we're in. If you have a physical need in your body today, if you have a financial emergency that only God could help with, even if you got yourself in it in the first place, can I tell you, God's the one that'll get you out of it. 
If, if you have an emotional burden that you've just been carrying, a pain, a guilt, of something from your past, whatever it is, can I tell you, God wants you to be free from it today. And I want you to be proud of who God has called you to be. I don't want you to be ashamed of what you've been going through. I want you to be a testimony of other people, to other people. So right now, I'm not going to have you bow your heads. I'm not going to have you close your eyes. Because as we read in Scripture, we don't want to shrink away from death. We want to die to these old stuff. We want the stuff that the devil's thrown us to die off of us, for it to be gone. None of that stuff to be there. If you've got a situation that you just want to give completely to God, if you would allow me to pray for you, I want to lay hands on you. I want to ask those that would come and pray to, to gather around. And us believe by faith that God's going to change those situations. Would you move from where you're at right now? If you, if you need prayer for anything, don't let anything compromise the message that God wants to be lived out in your life. Some are coming. If you feel that tug, move now. Be bold in this moment so you can be bold in your life. Don't let anything, y'all line up, just get in a straight line if you will, because I, I want to make sure I pray for every single one of you that, that God's will is done in this place. And I'm praying, some of you just taking that step of faith, you're already getting free of stuff. Some of you are already feeling the reaction, the response in your spirit to your act of faith. You may not have felt like even coming to church today. You may not have felt like even, you know, coming up here to the front. You may have questioned it, but you've done what God has asked you to do. You've responded to him. And I tell you, anytime we do our part, God always does his part. Every time. Hallelujah. So whatever, whatever your need is, whatever your situation is, can I, can I ask you to do something with me? If, it, if it's something that the devil has, has put on you, if it's something you've been going through, it doesn't really matter to God. He'll take all of it. He, he said, we cast all of our cares on him, for he cares for us. So what I want to ask you to do is just begin to pray. And if by an act of faith, just lift your hands to God. Lift that burden to the Lord. Lift your heart to God right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for every person that is down here. God, that the enemy has tried to take them out, that the enemy has tried to put doubt in their heart, in their mind, that it could ever get better, that it could ever be different. God, everything with you is new. So whatever situation they've been going through, if it's from the enemy, you can wipe it away, you can wipe it out, and cause all things to be made new right now in Jesus' name. Father, as your word says, I lay hands on everyone here. I speak the word of God over them, that you make a difference in their life. You make a difference in their situation. Hallelujah, God, that you change, transform hearts, God, transform lives. Give healing to those in need of healing in their physical body. They've got a work for you that they, that they are called to do, that they can't complete, Lord, unless they are fully healed. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, God. I pray for it all, God. I pray blessings, Lord, on, on their families, God, on their finances, on those things. The devil tries to get at us different ways. He tries to come around the back door because we fought him off before, and he will not be victorious in Jesus' name. There's no disease that is stronger than you, God. There is no power in hell that can stand before your authority. So we claim victory over it right now in Jesus' name. Father God, I speak just the, 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 the hope that you've put in their heart, the hope for a better day, the hope for victory, the hope, the hope for freedom, God, that it would never die out, that even when they don't feel it, they will walk in it, they will testify of it, The people are going to look at these folks right here and see Jesus in them. They're going to see victories start happening. They're going to see the war start to be won. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would somebody give God praise in this place for what he has done? And I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to belabor the point. I'm not trying to keep you longer. I want to ask you to do one last thing for me and, and with me. I, I don't know how you're feeling right now, and I really don't care. Because I know what God does. I know what his word does. It says when his word goes forth, it cannot return void. It will not return empty. So God has given you a word this morning. You hear me. That everything has changed from now. Now, now it's, your, it's your part to walk in faith and live the victory that God has already won. Jesus fought really hard on the cross for us. You think he would want you just living halfway in victory after that battle he went through? And he says he did it for us. Remember, we were crucified with Christ and we died our old self, but he resurrects us. We live by faith in this body through him. So you've got victory over whatever you've got. What I'd like to ask y'all to do, I know we prayed for Jimmy once already. 
I just want to seal. The, the enemy's already attacking my faith. Attacking you, you sometimes pray something and you wonder if it's going to be answered. Can we just pray a prayer of rejoicing for what God has already done for him? Can we pray a prayer of thanking God? And if you've got need of whatever you're going through in your situation, claim it right now. Claim victory in Jesus' name right now. Could I ask y'all, would you just get, would y'all lay hands on me? Let me stand in for Jimmy and let's pray for him right now. If y'all would gather around, let's pray together. God, we pray for our brother. We're thankful, God, that your word has gone forth, that we have obeyed your word. We have done what it says. We have lifted him up to you. And God, in scripture, everybody that was brought to Christ was made whole. And so we are laying him at your feet. God, we are speaking health and healing into his body. And we thank you for it. We are rejoicing, God. We're expecting it to be done. We are believing that it's already done because Jesus already took care of it on Calvary, on the cross, God. And I give you thanks. I give you praise. God, I pray over everybody, all their needs. We just thank you that you're the answer and you've already answered it. Now work it out, God. Let us live it out in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Would somebody rejoice in him as we go today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Church, y'all are dismissed. Go with God. Let's live this thing out that we talk about, and let's be ambassadors for Jesus everywhere we go. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again.